In this lesson, we're going to talk a little bit about rebar cover using Revit uh, 2015. Uh, we have a concrete structural beam. I have a 3D view. I have a section through it, uh, longitudinal, and then I have a cross section right through the um, through the uh, normal plan section looking in. Um, and so what we're going to do is look at the global settings to start with. So we're going to go into reinforcement under structure and then we're going to see rebar cover settings. Well, Revit's asking me to save, I'm just going to cancel. So we have some settings in here. Cast against earth, this is the, the cover for the rebar to the exterior of the concrete. Exterior um, concrete number three to number five bar is going to be this uh, inch and a half. Exterior um, face uh, six to number 18 is two inches and then interior we have framing and columns okay we have interior shells three to five uh, the bar number and interior shell and then interior slab wall and uh, joists okay number three to number 11 and number 14 to 18 so you can create your own new scenarios here give it a description and then what you do is you apply that to the actual element itself most of them I believe are instance properties so this is where the global setting is and if you change this and this is being applied to your beam it'll actually update it which is what we're gonna do so we're just gonna leave these default settings in here so this would be an interior uh, and it would be framing and columns. So let's go in and um, if we uh, pick on this we get our rebar option and you'll notice that uh, up over here but it, you'll notice down in here it's going to say uh, rebar cover I'll hover rebar cover top face rebar cover bottom face and then any other face and then what it's using is interior framing columns that's that setting of inch and a half and it's also telling you the number okay so those are the three settings I'm just hovering over here hopefully that uh, help tooltip is showing up on the recording so these are the three instance parameters of this beam and these are the settings it's using which came from those settings we just saw so as I place some reinforcing in here um, my uh, warning about the hooks I'm going to place a straight bar perpendicular I'll use a number eight now as you go to place that you see the green dashed line that's the cover okay so it's going to abide by that you've got to stay inside that if I change the cover numbers that green box will get a little bit smaller because it's or if I increase the cover so in this case I'm going to add in some stirrups and I want my rebar to sit inside the stirrups and I want the stirrups to control the the spacing. I don't really want these rebars to, to be way out there because there's no way my stirrup will be able to make that bend and get around. So I'm going to start by going down here and, and adding in a stirrup instead. And I'm going to say parallel. And I'm going to say, you know, maximum spacing of, you know, 8 inches. And you'll see it show up in my 3D view. You see that's reading the cover again. So I click on here and I can move it around to wherever I want that bar bend to be. And then I place it. It puts my rebar in there. Now, while I'm in here, I might as well continue. And I'll use a straight bar and I'll go perpendicular. And I'll say fixed number of, you know, three rebars. So, oh, not. It's putting 16 in there. I need to, interesting, single. Um, fixed number of three. There we go. So now notice this time around, it's not, it's reading the, like there it's reading the cover, but here it's reading the rebar itself. Okay, there's a difference. So where you move your mouse around, you can either go right to the outside cover or you can have it go within the, the stirrups and it's smart enough to know that. So I'm going to place one inside of the stirrups here, one over here, and that's good. I'm going to hit modify and finish, and now I have all my nice rebar in there. Okay, hit escape, escape. What's that extra? Oh, that's just a graphics thing that's doing that. So now, watch what happens if I play with my cover. Let's move this over here a little bit. Let's go back into here and let's play with my cover because 
this beam was set to use this one. Do you remember interior framing columns? Okay, watch what happens if I make this smaller. I'm going to make it an inch and I'm going to hit apply and boom, my stirrup will get closer to the outside and these rebar are being driven by the stirrup. So same thing, I can go back into here, reinforcement, uh, sorry, cover settings, go back to that interior and change this to be two inches instead. Okay, and while I'm in here, I'm going to say uh, interior shell three to five. Okay, this is a number eight. So let's change this to be, um, you know, let's change this to be one inch. And watch what we're going to do. We're going to hit up apply. It's going to apply this two inches to start with. It's going to get smaller. Click out. Now further to that, if I pick the beam, I can go in here and say, okay, you know what? For the top. I'm going to use a different one. I'm going to use this one here. And then it's going to actually change that. And for the the bottom, I'm going to change the bottom also to be this one, which is half an inch. And click out. So you see the bottom and the top is half inch. And now we're going to do the other. You have to pick the beam first. And we go down in here and say, okay, you are also using this um, this guy here, one inch. Oh, I changed it to this one which is half an inch okay um, and it you see it's it even though this is the name okay it, it's not it's not reading whether that is a number six or a number 18 it's going to apply the one inch no matter what it's supposed to be set up so that it, you know your bar sizes and you would change it accordingly so it's not really reading the bar size it's applying this one inch cover and I'm going to click on there and it does that so now the top uh, let's see if they're all the same. Um, let's change them all to be this guy. Okay. And this guy. Click. Okay. So globally, you set your cover in here. It's very straightforward. You can make up your own. Again, this is just the name. It's not really reading that. You're supposed to be smart enough to set this for some rebar and this for another rebar because it's not really reading it. If you hit add, you add a new one in and then you give a spacing over here and then you can apply it. So the global settings, I'm just going to delete that guy. The global settings are set up here and then they're then applied to the um, to the instance of the framing member. So if we pop in a little column here and Oh, we need to be in a floor plan. Uh, let's go to say my let's go to my level two and pop in a column, structural column, and we'll go with uh, depth down to level one. Concrete, big concrete column, and we'll place it vertical. I wish it would do that by default, and. Uh, place that column in here boom okay so if I go now to my level one I'll see that column sitting there in section okay and again if I pick on here it's gonna have those same options rebar cover top face bottom face meaning top and bottom of the column and then other faces would be the faces around here and then if we were to expand this a little bit, we have each setting. So pretty straightforward. Set them up in the global structural settings inside of here. And then after that, the actual instance will uh, govern um, which ones to use where. So a little bit of information on using the cover settings for our rebar and the fact that the rebar in fact will update if you change those global settings.